Well, our next guests, Alexandra Wenman and Monica Hammond, claim they were so fed up waiting for their dream men to turn up that they decided to conjure up a man using magic. I mean, not out of thin air. No, he <laughs> kind of was. You've got to believe it. Uh, well, I suppose they're very powerful, clearly. They're both now happily married. They join us to tell us more. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning to both of you. you. I mean, this okay. is fascinating, isn't it? Alexandra, let's start with you. Where did this start? What, was, you know, where were you, what were you thinking? How, where was, what was your life doing at the, the, this point? Well, I've always been quite magical. Um, I've, I was born psychic and I, and I feel energy. I'm a, I'm a highly sensitive person. Uh -huh. And um, I tend to feel when there's sort of magic in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also a hopeless romantic, and for most of my life I was waiting for the one, as most, most women are taught, you have to get the fairy tale right. Uh, but I always had this feeling that there was a person, my person, out there. Waiting for you. Waiting for me. And I, and I guess, you know, when I was younger and I, and I had a busy job, I didn't really, you know, think about it, wasn't very lucky in love. And um, then one day I just went, you know what, it's time. And I remember that my, my grandfather had died and he and my grandmother were really madly in love. He was beautiful, such a gentleman. So I had this conversation with him in spirit and I said, right, you go and find him. Go and get him now. I'm, I'm fed up with this. And uh, around about the same time, I was working as a journalist and I went and uh, did a, covered a story um, for a workshop, which was a manifesting workshop, and yeah. I learned to do vision boards and things like that. So just to stop there, what is manifesting and vision boards? What... So manifesting is where you, you kind of call to you what you want. You use the law of attraction through the power of positive thinking and yep. positive visualisation. And you kind of act as though you've already done it, you've already got it. So you, you tune into those emotions and, you know, say you're looking for love, you act as though you're already in love. You treat yourself as though you're already in love is that what and you it do? attracts it in. Yeah, so I, I learned to do vision boards, I made this vision board, and then I took it one step further. When I went home, I thought, do you know what, I'm going to go to town with this because I can feel this magic in the air. So I wrote a letter to the universe, I wrote all the details of what my ideal person should be like, and yeah. it was, you know, tall, dark and handsome. So you're quite specific. I was quite specific. Yeah. You don't post that, do you? But no, well, you, you <laughs> basically, you kind of post it to the universe. So I, I, I said, look, he's got to be funny. He's got to have a great sense of humour. He's a nut job, my husband. He really does have a crazy sense of humour. Um, and he's got to be, he's got to, you know, sit down to the looks, you know, healthy, wants to travel. And on my vision board, I'd put all these places like Machu Picchu and Chichen Itza and, the, you know, the pyramids. And we've been to all those places <gasps> now together. Wow. But I, I wrote this letter to the universe, all in positive language. You can't do negative language because you, you only attract what you're putting out. And I burnt it and I released it and I just stayed in absolute trust. And I said, OK, so if he's out there, and if this magic that I'm feeling in the air is aligned, go get him, universe. And then I lit a candle. It was a red candle. I remember it was a red candle and I carved hearts in it because it helps to put symbols and things. And I literally let the candle burn all the way down overnight. And that's the same thing. You're, you're releasing it to the universe and you're saying, right, this is what I want. I'm anchoring it in with this positive visualisation. And I let it go. And then you let it go. You let it go in so your Hang trust. on. Is that magic or is that positive... Reinforcement. Well, it's the same thing. It's, it's one in the same. Right, okay. It's one in the same, really. Cool. I mean, it's it's positive thinking. You, you work with your imagination, you work with your emotions with any of this, and that is the doorway into the beyond. So then Anthony turned up and he's now part of your he life. He turned up and I didn't even know he was in front of my face. He was my housemate for five months. And oh, look at your wedding pictures, they're beautiful. But when, uh, yeah, I wrote a song for our wedding as well. And he, so he, uh, when he turned up, I actually was looking for a, a flat. The, the turn of events was incredible. I had to move really quickly out of my house. And then I went and he opened the door to this flat that I was looking at. And it's so interesting. I remember looking at him and going, because he didn't look like how I would want mm -hmm. my soulmate to look. He didn't have hair, he had a shaved head. So I'm looking at this guy going, oh, I don't know, he looks like a bit of a thug. I'm not sure I can live here. But then I this looked, isn't the letter I wrote. I was like, this is not the guy. <laughs> but I thought, Universe! <laughs> but I What's kind going of thought, on? If I, if I move in with two guys, maybe they'll have friends. You never know, the network, you don't know. So he, he opened the door, I looked at his face and thought, well, yeah, no, I'm not into him. But then I looked in his eyes and I recognised something in his eyes. It wasn't love at first sight or I didn't recognise it as that. It took me five months to come round to the idea that he was the one. And then I moved out and then I went, Oh God, I've left somebody behind. And then we went on a we, that was it. we went on a date. Now, Monica, 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 my namesake, Monica Hammond, you were a little bit more specific than Alexandra, weren't you? Tell us about your story. 
Uh, well, um, for me, uh, I can show um, a different angle because um, I wasn't into energy work back then. I am psychic, I'm a medium, but my abilities developed later on in life. Um, so uh, back then I was 24, I was tired, I had... Uh, I had experienced many failed relationships. And yes, at that young age, many failed relationships and not very nice. I dated an alcoholic and an, a narcissist and oh, and whatnot. I was We've all tired, been there, babes. So. We've all been there. But <laughs> tell me about the nitty gritty. Tell us about the spell that you did. So um, I kind of got to know the lot of attraction and um, I decided to give it a go rather than going on dating apps as per usual. And so what I did was I went down the route of um, imagining what it is that I'm experiencing with that guy. And my guy was already there because we met at a first aid course at work and uh, we performed resuscitation on one another. And so it really struck me. I really felt connection. So hold on a minute, Monica. So you had the person, so it was like Gareth, he worked with you and you were like, he's gonna be mine. And you just like pretended like he was, he was already yours. So yes, kind of. We 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 met uh, by our pure coincidence on a on a training course because we we worked in different services. So we I saw him that that one time and then and then I on again on another course. And yes, yes, that was what I felt. But the thing is that I had to stress to the universe that if he's single, I like him oh. because I don't want any you know, anybody to suffer. Yeah. I don't want anybody to drop anything else for me. So that's just, the thing, and just, that's very important. Just so we can clear up this. So no one's casting spells here. No, and then... no. You have to be really careful with a person's free will. You're not, you're not forcing anybody to do anything against their will. It's not like, oh, you will be mine. Well, that was <laughs> the first question. When I read, read, read my leaf, I was like, is no. there going to be a moment where these guys in five years' time, you go, they go, hang on, who the hell are you? <laughs> it's not like a bewitching, you know, we're not, we're not in the, the, the witch trials anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like you, you, you kind of, in my experience, you, you sort of ride on the current of the magic and yeah. it, you can kind of feel it in yourself if you're ready for something. You can use it with anything money, success, if, if you're kind of feeling it in the air, then you can capitalise on that. You know when you get a, a sense that something's meant for you? Yeah. You know, you've got, you've got childhood dreams or visions about you, what you want your life to be like. You can kind of sense it when it's about to drop in. And if you do some magic or, or, or manifestation, you, it's like the two meet. Like, if you listen to the universe, you can you can bring it into alignment, and then what is for you will never pass you by. I totally get the the concept of positive thinking and reinforce it. But if people just sit at home going, "Well, I want a million pounds," if I just will that, that's the you know it's it's important we stress that yeah. it's not a shopping list. It right? has to be for your highest good as well. So if you were going to win a million pounds, but then you're the sort of person that doesn't know how to spend a million pounds and oh. they're likely to go out and blow it, the universe might not allow you to have the million pounds. But, you know, it, it, it's about getting yourself used to the idea that you know what you're going to do with that money. Say you're somebody... It, it's, it might happen with people, you know, say you're somebody who's a bit of a humanitarian and you've got a vision of something you want to build with that million pounds, then the universe might go, wow, well, I can really see that this person's been put through their paces, they've known... Maybe they've known hardship or poverty. They're going to use this for the highest good. So, OK, we'll drop it in, we'll allow Alexandra, it. Monica, honestly, <laughs> it's absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Yeah, nice talking Brilliant. to you. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you for you. having us.